<laughs> Michael Mann's Heat is his 1995 urban crime classic starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro who lead an ensemble cast including Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore and John Voight. The film follows LAPD detective Vincent Hanna, played by Pacino, who is out to put a stop to career thief Neil McCauley, played by De Niro. Mann's highly stylish film takes a look at how the two men's professional lives affect their personal lives, and how, ironically, given they are on opposite sides of the law, the two men gain a deep level of understanding of one another, what makes the other tick. They are ultimately very similar creatures, two sides of the same coin, and it's art imitating life with the two characters being played by two actors considered the best of their generation, constantly compared, constantly sought after for the same roles, even being in the same movie with The Godfather Part 2, but never meeting on screen until their famous coffee shop scene in Heat. Movie fans waited decades to see Pacino and De Niro in the same film, and Heat was the perfect movie for the duo to show off their acting chops and face off against each other. Perhaps the greatest element of Mann's film is the strength of the characters. The all-star cast are given great material to work with, and the film fully lives up to the hype of being the ultimate Pacino-De Niro face-off, given Hannah and Neil are such great characters. De Niro is suave, cool, understated and nuanced, like many of the great characters he has played over the years. Pacino, on the other hand, well, Pacino is bombastic, unorthodox, loud and wild, it is a great performance, don't get me wrong, he has many great moments and definitely shows up to hold his own against De Niro, but in something of a trend with Pacino in the 90s, he shouts a lot. He has these moments where he just randomly starts yelling at the top of his voice and then goes back to his usual growl, like when he screams at Albert shouting, GIMME ALL YOU GOT! or when he's simply unable to contain himself when confronted by the idea of Charlene's great ass. He's like a wild animal, a rottweiler, snapping and turning, hunting and chasing his prey throughout the film. That much is a given, it's part of the character, the hunt, the chase is what gives him his blood life. But there are these moments in the film where you can imagine Michael Mann maybe telling Pacino to come over and saying, that was good Al, but can we try again without waking the dead? Because the thing is, looking at Pacino's performance, you'd be forgiven for thinking the man was on drugs. And funnily enough, he was. Not Pacino, I mean. Well, maybe Pacino was. How else did he randomly improvise the line where he blurts out, she's got a great ass? But Vincent Hanna is actually chipping cocaine throughout the film. It was part of the original script of the character to be a bit of a cocaine addict, and it's his substance abuse which is actually why he has these crazy moments where he goes off the handle. Pacino's performance was always supposed to be different from De Niro's anyway. It's not an accident that De Niro is so cool and collected and Al is chewing every bit of scenery in sight. The characters are supposed to contrast each other. As Pacino once said in an interview where he was with Michael Mann and De Niro, at the onset I thought, I don't know if I mentioned it to Michael, but I thought there should be that difference in the characters in terms of how they come off, what colours they wear. The more introverted, the more extroverted. I thought that would help with the balance, that was part of it. Pacino went on to add, I don't know if this has gotten out much, I might be breaking the law now but I'll say it, the character I played is a guy who's been around, he's done a lot of stuff and he also chips cocaine and I always thought that was a choice we made but yet not showing it because it would. Michael Mann then interrupted Pacino to add, it would attract too much attention. Pacino continued, but there is a scene in it which never got into the film and I always wanted to say that sometime just so you know where some of the behaviour is coming from. I never thought I'd have the opportunity to say that, I've wanted to say it for 20 years so thanks for this opportunity. And it makes a lot of sense because if you're in the camp that thinks Pacino was really over the top in heat and he overacted, Knowing that the character was actually on cocaine recontextualizes the performance and all of a sudden it's a really good performance because he really does look like he's on something. With the references to cocaine use removed from the film, you could argue it does a disservice to Pacino's performance because now his wild outbursts and weird moments are just that, weird. 
Maybe he's just eccentric, maybe the chase is like a drug for him and his crazy behaviour is because he's addicted to it. Who knows why exactly they chose to remove the cocaine stuff. Maybe it was to highlight how Hannah's overall life was a train wreck and a disaster zone. And if they included the drug use, maybe they thought audiences would chalk up Hannah's entire self-destructive personality to the drugs and not consider anything else. A bit like how the pimp that Harvey Keitel plays in Taxi Driver was originally black, but Martin Scorsese and the filmmakers changed the colour of the actor because they didn't want the audience to think, oh, Travis Bickle is a racist and that's all his character is. No, there's much more to it. And likewise, as Mann said, maybe it would attract too much attention. Or maybe it was that if Hannah was shown to be on drugs, it would make him seem more villainous and blur the lines between him and Neil a bit too much. Part of the point of Pacino's character is that his dedication to his work is what destroys his home life. But if he was shown to be on drugs, it would take away from that. And the drugs, as Mann said, would be what people focused on. The job is his drug. But still, it would have been interesting to see a short scene here and there, or even just a shot of Pacino sniffing and touching his nose. I think it makes a lot more sense of Pacino's performance. And in fact, if you see him talking about it, I might be wrong, but Pacino comes off as almost embarrassed by his heat performance and brings up the coke to justify it. Still though, with the way it is, Hannah comes off as being in the game for so long, he's trolling half of the players in it. Either that or he's so fed up, stressed and jaded, he just lashes out to let off some steam. Is it just Pacino making excuses? Were his characters in Scent of a Woman and The Devil's Advocate also on coke? Well, apparently not, as in the original script of the movie, there is a scene where Hannah says to another character, you holding? And the other character flips Hannah a small vial of coke, saying, on the house. This is an exchange between Hannah and the bouncer before Hannah meets with Albert and Richard in the club. If anything, this shows how much of an actor's performance is left to the mercy of the director and what he chooses to include into the film. Take Sigourney Weaver and Aliens, for example. She based her entire character around the fact that Ripley lost her daughter, Newt essentially becoming a surrogate daughter, the alien queen is a mother, and the primary antagonist, motherhood themes are all over the film. Only for James Cameron to cut this scene out of the theatrical cut. She blamed him for losing the Oscar that year. So what do you think of Ficino's revelation? Do you think the character is improved by being on coke? Do you think they should have left the coke scene in the film? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Before we finish, I just want to thank my patrons, Andre Millington, Nicholas Curtis and Dirk K. And also my channel members, the new on Goam24, Rikers and Michael Awatwee.